Hello, 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 beautiful people of the world. I have a guest here from Australia. From, it's an Aussie. We call it Aussie. Yes, right? well, I'm an Aussie. Yeah, Pastor John Fisherman. Daniel. And uh, he will tell us about his experience about the foods, the different varieties of foods in the Philippines. Okay, so Pastor John. Can you say something about the food in the Philippines and can you invite and tell our global audience, including the foreigners, non-Filipinos, to try our food, okay? Sure. Pastor? For sure. It's oh. delicious. It's very delicious. It's not like our Western food at all, which some of our Western food is very, very uh, delicious, but it's, it's so different here, like in every country. So, um... Let me see. I've got to made a whole list here because there's so many I can't remember them all. Um, they have this food called adobo. It's pork or chicken, and it's cooked, and it's normally with potato in it, and uh, it's cooked, and uh, it's so different to any other recipe that you've tried in your country. And then they have uh, lumpia. It's chicken, pork, and fresh vegetables. Um, and that can be cooked and, and it's wrapped up with this little uh, wrapper, uh, flour wrapper, and it's delicious. And then they have pancit. It's kind of like noodle, like thin noodles, but I prefer the thicker noodles myself personally. And they put vegetables in there and prawns, um, and they, they put in uh, like it's canton, it's called, uh, with thick noodles. And uh, the baihon, that's the thin noodles. And you put calamansi, that's a little small green like lemon, and you just cut it in half and squeeze it on your fork so the seeds don't fall into your food. And then you squeeze that out, put a little bit of soy sauce on it if you want to, and that's very nice. It's not my favorite, but it's very nice. Because one of my favorites is really sinigan. Now that's like a soup. That can be fish, shrimp, or pork. And uh, it's like a soup. And every time my wife cooks it, Filipino, she's a good cook too, um, I, I have a small saucer that I get the soup because a lot of people throw the soup away. Um, and the, the, all the vegetables and all the goodness and nutrients are in the soup. So I have a lot of soup. And yes, it's summer every day here. It doesn't matter. I got used to that when I used to board ships and share the gospel on ships back in New Zealand. For um, like 14 years there every day, and I got used to having soup even in the summertime. And then lechon is pork barbecue. The pork barbecue, what they do is put it on little sticks, little skewers, like wooden skewers, and they barbecue all this pork on a stick, and it's simply delicious. I love it. Um, then you have the the um, the curry, like. Indian, okay, it's very nice. And then calderita, beef or chicken calderita. It's got potato, red, red, um, green and green peppers. Uh, it's got uh, carrot and uh, beef and chicken, and it's delicious, really delicious. And then there's ginaling, that's ground pork with raisins and tomato. It's really delicious. With, a, with also with potato in it, cut up very, very finely. Uh, and it's really, it's probably the next best one that I like. And then nanka, that's coconut milk with jackfruit and shrimp. That's very nice also. Lumpia, mango sprouts, carrot wrapped with lumpia wrapper. It's like, you can buy that here in the shops, in the supermarkets, and you can make it yourself if you like and it's delicious. It's not cooked, it's kind of raw. It's very nice. And kilowin, it's, um, how you say, um, it's made of fish. Raw so fish, raw fish. Raw fish. And it's absolutely delicious. And you have that as a little extra on the side of you, but don't eat too much of that first. <laughs> um, but you'll get used to it. It's really very delicious. I haven't had any kilowin for a while, actually. And then bagu on. It's how can you explain it? It's baby fish, shrimps like, and a bit salty, 
with green mango. M mango that's not ripened yet, not yellow, it's still green and hard. And you chop it up in pieces and you just dip it into the bugger on. Now, bugger on, it's probably the nearest taste to Vegemite and Marmite that I could explain. <laughs> um, it's kind of blackish brown. Um, I don't like the liquidy one, I like the thick one really, it's the best one for How me. How about the smell of bagong? Uh, I don't mind it at all. <laughs> I don't mind it at all. Some people do not like the smell. I know a lot of um, Westerners don't like it, but I don't know why, it's really delicious. I love it. Um, yeah, and you don't have too much of that um, because it, it's salty and, it, and if you've got kidney stones, you can't eat a lot of it. But it's so nice, especially with the green hard mango. You just crunch it with the bugger on there. It's, it's like a side dish. It's really delicious. Balut. I have tried it twice. The first time was a good experience because it was only 17 days old and it was just hard parts in it. Um, and then the next time I tried, somebody bought me some, it was 22 days old, where the chicken's head, the feathers, the beak, the eyes, the feet and wings, it's all in there. And I got down to the head, I said, that's it, no more. But that is a delicacy here. Now the rice um, is, uh, most Filipinos have rice three times a day, breakfast, lunch and dinner. Uh, I, I don't myself personally. Uh, three days a week I have cereals with muesli, uh, raisins and milk and um, lots of things all set into it. Um, and then the other three days I have um, eggs and tomatoes on toast with Vegemite. Um, so that's what I have for breakfast. But for lunch and dinner, I have any of these meals I've said to you, uh, showed you earlier um, with rice. And what I do, I chop up garlic, ginger, uh, red, uh, purple onion, and I mix it with apple cider vinegar, and I make it a, a mix. And I pour that over my rice, just a little bit, because otherwise it's too sour, and a little bit of, of soya sauce and pepper. And I mix that in with my rice every time. Okay. Now, spaghetti. My wife makes the best spaghetti sauce you've ever tasted, bar none. Um, it's kind of spicy, just enough, not too hot. Sometimes people add too much spice, like the Thai, some of this spice is too hot for me. You only need to have a small portion of it, otherwise you, your mouth burns too much. And the only way to get rid of burning mouths with hot spicy food is to get real yogurt, real yogurt, and takes a spoon or two, and that gets rid of the heat from your mouth, okay? But my wife makes the best spaghetti sauce you've ever tasted. It's, most spaghetti sauces are quite bland and, and uh, just ordinary, but my wife makes one that has just got just enough spice in it just to be different. Okay, so Chris, have you got anything else to ask me about the foods? Yeah, actually, <clears throat> I would like to add some food that you maybe didn't try yet or you tried but you forgot to mention in your uh, statements. Uh, people, beautiful people of the world, we also have bulalo. It's uh, like a beef stew like that, something like that. It's a nice soup. When you go to Tagaytay in, uh, in Cavite, yeah. it's nice to try the bulalu there. And the sisig, the sisig is mostly the foreigners like the taste. Yes, I've had that. It's made from the pork ears and uh, the head of the pork with skin and some small meats like and that. with the sisig, don't they put an egg in there? Yes, you can have uh, egg or no egg at all, and some people Koreans put use that mayonnaise one, like that. So you can have it hot and spicy or regular like that. Right. It tastes really good also. Yes, I've had that. And you also forgot to mention about the lichum baboy, or it's a roasted pig. Right, yes, I have had that too. Yeah, uh, when you mention about roasted pig or lichum baboy, it's best in Cebu. Right, so the there. best, yeah. And Cebu it has also the best chicharron, if you know chicharron, the pork skin. Right. It's really, and also we are from Bacolod and other parts of the country in the Philippines, but the best tasting lichon is in Cebu. I've seen them when I was in Mindanao with the tribes, and at midnight they, they get a great big pig, which we provided us missionaries, we provided that for them, and they get a, they get a bamboo, big bamboo, and they shove it through the rear, right up through the mouth, mm -hmm. and they put it over the fire and turn it for hours. 
and it's screaming and keeping you awake. I don't know. Um, but it's delicious. It's all roasted, you know. And the different functions you go to, they normally have lecture on there. And uh, it's really nice. And, and it feeds a lot of people a whole, a whole pig, big pigs. Very delicious. Yeah, most of the parties here, like birthday parties, uh, weddings, any anniversaries like that, they used to consider lichon babo as part of the, the food because it's, it's we call it here as social or it's bonga. It's a great party if you have lichon. And also, I think you forgot to mention about boodle fight. You know boodle fight? What's that, Chris? Boodle fight is... You put all the foods together in, in a banana leaf and then you put some shrimp, barbecue, eggs, rice, pancit, lumpia, uh, fish, grilled fish, grilled pork, grilled, uh, you know, barbecue like that. So that's boodle pie and everybody eats there using their hands only. Right. No pork, no fork and spoon. You have to use your hands. I've done that. With some people, are, uh, including in the party. Like, it, it, we were with one particular tribe, and they get a banana tree, and they cut the trunk, and it's, they use it as a dish. It's just cut in half, and it's like a dish with, with uh, the ends open. And they just fill it up with the rice and the food, and you eat it with your hands. And you sort of put your hands in it like that, and... and Go like that with your thumb and push that into your mouth like that. That's how they taught us to do that. And then, of course, like you just said, you have the banana leaf. It's kind of like a tablecloth, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you, or a, or you use it as a, as that plate, and you put all your rice and foods on there and eat it with your 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 hands like that with your fingers. And that saves doing the dishes. It saves, it saves um, knives and forks and plates. Yeah, and, and it's it, more fun, you know. Yeah, it's more fun. In the Philippine yeah, thinking, it's more fun it? so you can cross your boundary. You can get the food cross over the other side of the table, the other side of the leaf. So it's more fun, Yes. especially for those new people, I mean, the foreigners. So It's experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because and adventure and they are used to use, you know, fork and spoon or knife like that well here they use a fork and spoon and you and the spoon is like our knife i've often said to people why don't you make sharp spoons so we can cut through the steak easier <laughs> yeah. it be cut your tongue <laughs> yeah, that's right <laughs> so it's good for you know getting rice like that and also we have also exotic foods made from animals like snakes well, we have frogs, yet. we have a crocodile, haven't tried that either. some, you know, exotic foods. Well, I've had uh, like a, a, a taste of this big, kind of like a, not a worm, but it's kind of like a jelly sort of thing, and it's got um, almost like a jellyfish. It, it, it was in Bahol, I think, and um, uh, it's a delicacy, apparently. Maybe that's tamilok in, uh, inside the rotten tree or bark of the tree like that I it's tamilok know. so many um, like that like it's, a bit it's like, like jelly, worms <laughs> like a big blob of jellyfish and it's very soft and you just, it's sort of clear white clear yeah, that's white. tamilok i think that's okay. tamilok. and I, I had a try of that too <laughs> mm, so many actually because philippines you know people of the world beautiful people philippines is 7641 islands that's a lot and what about when the tide goes out? Isn't there more? Uh, when it goes up, the tide is higher. Maybe it's only 7,000. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but 7,000 when it's low tide. Yes. So you can go to all these islands in your life. You will spend about 10 to 15 years or 20 years or the whole of your life to get all these islands in right. the Philippines. And it's good going island hopping too. Yeah. And eating okay. on the beach. You have to, to buy a naval boat or speed boat to go to these uh, islands. Well, we've, we've done it on a, on a, a, a what they call it, with the uh, outriggers and a motor and going from island to island. Uh, that's a motorboat or... Yeah. 
with the outrigger, like a kind of big canoe. jet ski, like jet ski or no, no, it's a big long uh, boat with the outrigger, like uh, like a canoe. It's got a motor in the back, and then they pull up by the island with a big pole and just go in like that. Yeah, like a navy boat or something like that. Yeah, I've been many islands like that. Yeah, so places. up to the Philippines, for every island, or we have about two hundred local dialects spoken for internal conversation. So, so are very diverse. Even in the south northern part of Luzon, the boundary is only the bridge. And when you cross the bridge, like in Bulacan and Pampanga, there's another dialect. Right. So it's really a mystery for us Filipinos. Well, uh, we were made from God. <laughs> and this popular uh, dialects are Tagalog and Bisaya. Right. So, and every island, mostly if there are inhabitants in that island, they also have different food. So when you go to Batanes, you go to northern part of Luzon, there's another type of food, variety of food. When you go south, especially in Holo, Tawi-Tawi, near Borneo or near Malaysia, another type of food. So we are the most diverse type of yes. food in the world. So Variety plus. Come, you know, beautiful people yes. of the, our foreigner friends, come to our country. Have an adventure with yeah. food. Have an uh, adventure experience the, the, beauty, the beautiful smiles of Filipinos, the kind-hearted Filipinos. They yeah. will be assisting you. They will be more kind to you to assist you in all your you know like questions or anything they're very friendly here they're very friendly Make it on your bucket list if nothing else but before your bucket list come to the philippines we have been laughed at our own mistakes you know <laughs> some foreigners are you know what this type of people they are laughing at their own mistakes they're very honest people when you talk to them they give you very honest replies when you ask them serious questions they're very very sincere and we also, you know, during hard times, we just eat kamote oh, or banana. Up. We are very, you know, adjusted people when it comes to hardships in life. Yes, they put their trust in God. Yeah, some people in the West, West part of the world, yeah. maybe they commit suicide already. Yes, but the Filipinos are more resilient than that. You know, they, they believe and put their trust in God and they rise up over their situation, like the big floods they've had here in the past. And they just rise up and start again from nothing. Yeah. Amazing people. And good thing also for us, with us Filipinos, we all we eat all types of food. It's easy for us to adjust. For yeah. example, if you serve us Chinese food, easy. Korean food, easy. Yeah. Middle Eastern food, easy. Indian food, European food, pasta, American food. All the poach in the world, Spaces. Filipinos eat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can easily uh, like it. It's because it's in our blood, in our DNA. Uh, by the way, we are the most mixed blood also of all the races in the world. Before the Spanish came to our country, we have the Chinese and the Arabs. So some people, some Filipinos look like Arab, like Chinese. And then the Spanish, the Spaniards came here, and then the Americans, and then the Japanese and all these people and also we are the most uh, complex blood composition One thing I in the world. The hello, hello. Ah, you forgot hello, hello. Yes. Yeah. And the biko and the bibinka, just yes. the sweets, the delicacies, the leche plan, like that. How does it taste, the hello, hello? I mean, hello, hello. like hello, hello. What is hello, hello? Mix, hello, mix. Hello. It's a means mix, mix. And it can be ice cream, cream. It can have Kellogg cereals in there or rice bubbles. It has lots of other little things in there I can't remember the names of. And, um, and ice cream, they use this ube. I think it's called ube, is that correct? Yeah, that's taro. It, taro. taro. It, it's, it's like a, it's from under the ground. Purple. And it's purple. Color. I don't really like it myself personally, but I prefer the vanilla ice cream on there. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was in, in Kagai and Daro the, the first few times, they had a different halo halo there, and they had lots of, of um, buko salad. It's that young uh, coconut, and they scrape out all the buko, and, and it's scraped out very finely in, in little fine strips, and they put it in there. And that was delicious. That's the best halo halo I've tasted. <laughs> yeah, but it's totally different. Come to the Philippines, experience for yourselves, 
and then you can tell others about it and they'll come and have a good experience like yourself. You know, with their food and the places and the people. It's an amazing place, the Philippines. There's more fun in the Philippines. Amen, Chris? Thank you so much, uh, Pastor John. By the way, don't forget also to eat our soup number five in the Philippines. It's made up of... Uh, you know sex organs of the the cow okay the egg and you know That's different. but they said it's aphrodisiac so really before going to war uh, after your marriage your honeymoon you can eat soup number five so try this one okay. also okay so okay. beautiful <laughs> people in the world i'd like to thank uh, pastor john for his uh, uh his experiences sharing of his experiences in the philippines so this is uh, Travel 369. This is King Prince. Uh, once again, can you invite the beautiful people of the world, Pastor John, Certainly. to come and visit and try our food, okay? Please do yourselves a big favor, your friends and family. Come to the Philippines. Experience the Philippines in every way. It'll be something that you'll never forget. Okay? But please come to the Philippines. Experience the food, the people, and the places. Great place, the Philippines. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor John. So, please don't forget to watch, like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Travel 369, for more exciting uh, uh, views, uh, experiences in my channels. So, just keep on following my channel to know more good news about what is happening around the world. This is your host, King Prince. God bless us all. To God be the glory. God is good. All the time.